be here in five minutes. Have they nearly finished? This is the last room. Well, look, they've forgotten the peacock. No, it's to stay. Already sold. Lady Longsdale has bought it. She sent a man around later. It's beautiful, don't you think? Oh, I don't like it. It brings bad fortune. No, 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 Coroli. This is already sold. Thank you. This one, please. And then finish. <laughs> Can you take this, Dominic, and put it with the other things? Oh, we might need it on the cross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Well, that's it, isn't it? I hate leaving places, don't you? Not really, and certainly not this place. Really? Well, it's so gloomy. I'll be glad to see the back of it. I wish Arthur were here. What on earth for? I should feel, well, safe if he was with us on the journey. Oh, really, to Mother? Things, you, know. you talk as if we're going to Siberia. Jersey's only a day's journey. Yes, I know, dear, but in your condition... He'll be there to meet us. Have the men gone? Yes, Signora. And Lady Lonsdale is sending a man for the peacock this afternoon. Oh, yes, that thing. She bought it for me, you know. I'd rather it had been sold to the rest. Oh, oh well. Kio. The carriage is here, Signora. Thank you, Dominique. Goodbye, Norfolk Street. Come along, Mama. Patsy's waiting for us at the station. Lily. Yes? Oh, my dear, I do hope it's going to be all right. Of course it'll be all right. Don't worry. But if Edward finds he out... He won't find out. He'll be in America until after the birth, anyway. Now, come along, Mama. It's very long. about to go. Hadn't we better get on? Where's Dominique? She's looking after the luggage. Now, don't fuss, Mother. You get on and I'll join you in a minute. I think I'm... Ah, uh, here she is. Is the luggage here? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for having me, Dominique. Well, I'd better get on. Goodbye, Patsy. Oh, Lily. Goodbye. You will be all right, won't you? Yes, yes. We're staying with Arthur. He's been wonderful. You'll come back. I know you will. Oh, Patsy. Dearest Patsy, I shall miss you. It's so silly you're rushing off like this. I don't know why you couldn't have had the baby in London. I'd have looked after you. No, it's better this way, and Bertie wants you. Less trouble for everybody. Oh, we're coming. Goodbye, Goodbye. my dear. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm afraid it's all covered with dust sheets down here. I haven't had much time. The bedrooms are out and ready. I don't know how to thank you, Arthur. Please. And you still let it for the summer months every year? Oh, yes. The tenants were out a month or two ago. It's perfect. And tomorrow we'll unpack. Is Dominique seeing to the luggage, Mother? Yes. I'll just see if she needs any help. And then I think I'll go to bed. I, I really am quite tired. Good night, Arthur. Good night, Mrs. Loretta. Shall we see you tomorrow? Oh, yes. I'm only at the farm if you need me. Thank you, my dear. Mm. Darling, why didn't you tell me before? Ned is bankrupt, you say. I thought the Langtrys had money in Ireland. That's not the reason I'm here. But when you wrote, you said that's why you said Arthur. Here? Oh, my dear, I don't know how to tell you. I'm going to have a baby. I, I, I could have written to you, but I wanted to see you. I wanted to tell you. My poor Lily. You will help me. You're the only one I can trust. Well, you know I will. Of course I will. Oh, Arthur. I'm sorry, it's all so oh, stupid. Don't, please don't. I'll look after you, my darling. Everything will be all right. I promise. I love you, Lily. I love you. Whatever happens, I love you. Remember that. Yes, had a letter from Prince Louis last week. He's in, um, oh, what's the name of his ship? In Constant. Seems glad to be back on active service. Has he been informed of Mrs. Langtree's pregnancy? No, and he's not to be. I don't want him to know, not yet. But surely, sir, he has a right. All right. Francis, what do you say? You think Louis has a right to know, do you? Well, yes, sir, I thought... My that... dear fellow, as far as the world is concerned, Mrs. Langtree is staying in Jersey for a little while her husband is in America on business. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly clear, sir. Good. Now then, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Get in touch with Alan Young. Mrs. Langtree is to receive from him a loan of £2,000. That's most generous of Sir Alan, sir. <laughs> no such thing. The loan will appear to come from Eleno, but you will see to it that he is reimbursed immediately. Do you understand? I'm sorry, sir. I hadn't realised that Mrs. Langtree was in financial difficulties after the recent sale. I thought... Oh, good Lord, that barely took care of her debts. No, she's in trouble, but she's too proud to ask. And that impossible husband of hers is virtually bankrupt, so see to it, eh? At once, sir. Oh, Francis. Sir. Just one more thing. I don't think 
Mrs. Langtry can stay in Jersey for the birth. It'll do for the next month or so, but after that, we must find somewhere else. I think... Yes. She might enjoy a holiday in Paris. Get Lewis to arrange it, will you? Somewhere discreet. And I want a doctor in attendance. All the time, is that clear? Absolutely, sir. Just between ourselves, Francis, you understand? What do you think, Emmy? Arthur sent us a chicken from the farm. Mm. If I prepare it tonight, we can have it tomorrow. Mmm, lovely. What is it, my dear? I've just had a letter from a great friend of mine in London, Sir Alan Young. Did you ever meet him? No, I don't think so. He just sent me two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds? It's a loan, of course, but... Two thousand pounds? Oh, Lily, that's wonderful. And just when we need it most. What a kind man. What did you say his name was? Sir Alan Young. He's a good friend of the Prince of Wales. And such a generous gift. It's a loan, Mother. I'm not sure it even came from him. What do you mean, dear? He's not a wealthy man, never has been. I don't think he could afford... Who, then? You don't think the money came from His Royal Highness? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Oh, and he wants us to go to Paris, soon at the end of the month. Paris? But what's wrong with staying here? Everyone's been so good to us. No, they've been good to you. They ignore me altogether, or else are coldly polite. But what will Arthur say? He's promised to come and see us. Lily? Mm -hmm. I sometimes think you take Arthur for granted. He's very fond of you, my dear. I wouldn't like him to be hurt. I won't hurt him, Mother. Will you tell him about the money? Of course. But, Mama, I'd rather he didn't know where it came from. Well, it seems charming enough, a bit small, perhaps. It's quite large enough for us, even with me as big as this. <laughs> and I love being in Paris. When's the baby due? In a week. And that doctor fellow looking after you properly? Mr. Pratt? Oh, yes. He hardly lets me out of his sight. Good. Well, I'm delighted I was able to break my journey from Berlin. And you look radiant, my dear. Motherhood becomes you. Shouldn't you be lying down resting? No, Bertie. I'm perfectly all right. Mm. Well, I have to return to England tomorrow. I would love to stay, but... No, no, no. I forbid you to move. Brother Affia is waiting downstairs for me in a carriage. I can perfectly well see myself out. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye. Yes, just. Oh, my dear, what an escape. With Arthur arriving any oh, minute, Arthur's just... Arthur's not the... coming. I wrote and put him off. Don't worry, Mother. I told him Edward was coming from America and that I'd let him know as soon as the coast was clear. Oh. Are you all right, my dear? Yes, yes, it's nothing. I think I'll lie down for a bit. Oh, and could you bring some of those post office forms Artie brought from St. Helier? I'd like to write to the uh. Bear down, Cara. Down. That's right. Bravo. Again. Again. Oh, oh, good. Oh, oh. Once more. Once more. Everything's all right, isn't it? Yes. H have you everything you need? Oh, you should need some more towels. Yes. Coraggio. Down. Well? Not long now. Is she all right? Oh, yes, the doctor says everything's quite normal. Oh, thank God for that. Does she know I'm here? Yes, I told her. If only she let me come when I intended. She put me off, you know. Yes. God, did he come? Who, Ned? Well, he came for a little while, but he had to go back to London. Why? Why did she want to? Well, him? it's rather difficult to explain, I think. Oh, Lily. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> Arthur's here, my dear. Oh, is he? Yes. He came yesterday, just before the babe was born. He wants to see you. Dear Artie. Ask him to come in, will you, please? Do I look all right? You look beautiful, my dear. Lily. Hello, Artie. A little girl. I'm delighted it all went so smoothly. Mm. 
No trouble at all, apparently. Lovely little girl. I beg your pardon, sir? Mrs. Langtree. Oh, I was referring to Prince Wilhelm's wedding in Berlin, sir. Were you indeed? <laughs> well, Augusta's not much to look at, but she'll make really a good wife. Hmm? <laughs> now, Francis, what are we going to do about Louis? Ought he to be told, do you think? I mean, he's going to have to know one day. Well, it seems hardly fair to tell him when he's not in a position to do anything about it. <clears throat> when does his uh, ship do in port again? Not for many months yet. <clears throat> we'll wait. Say nothing until he returns to this country. I think in these circumstances that would be wise, sir, as long as Mrs. Langtry is all right and the baby's healthy. Oh, no, they're both very fit. They'll stay in Paris until she's able to travel and then they'll go back to Jersey. And you and I, my dear fellow, are off to Petersburg next week for the Tsar's funeral. You'd better pack some warm clothes, Francis. If they put us in the Anitchkov Palace, it's cold enough to freeze a fellow to death. <laughs> but, Lily, how can you? It's the only way I've thought and thought oh, about my it. Little Jean -Marie, my little darling. You know, I really think she is the prettiest baby I've ever seen. Oh, Mother, really? You Dominique. Mean it. Look at those little hands. Oh, I think she's really putting on weight at last. <laughs> no, I've made up my mind. As far as everyone's concerned, I have taken my little niece, Morris's child, to live with me. With Morris away in India, what could be more natural? Oh, I don't know. I'll oh, try to understand, Mother. It's the only way if we stick together as a family. You realize if Edward ever found out. Well, that would be the end of me, wouldn't it? Well, I... I will write to Morris. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mother. It's only for a little while, just until I can persuade Edward to give me a divorce. He won't give you a he divorce, will, Lily. He will have to. He won't. When he comes back from America, I'm going to ask Papa to go and see him. He'll be able to persuade him. He must. Come in. Oh. Thank you, my dear. See? I'm glad to find you in, Edward. How are you, my dear boy? And uh, America. Uh, how was America? You come from Lily, haven't you? She asked me to come and see you, yes. She in London? No, she's still with her mother. Why won't she see me? Since I got back from America, I've written to her twice. I have a right to see her. She's my wife. She wants you to give her a divorce, Edward. Eh? Hey? She wants you to no. give her a divorce. I won't. I won't do it. I won't give her a divorce. Never. Never, never, never. But you're already separated, dear boy. Well, not officially, It's I a know, plot to get rid of me. I know oh, what's going on. I see one another. A trip to America. She only drink there. Oh, it was just a wild goose chase. There's nothing for me to do. It was a waste of time. Oh, I'm not stupid, you know. I know what's going on. Oh, yes. He wants me out of the way, doesn't he? Well, I'm not going to play their game. Not anymore. I won't give her a divorce. I won't even divorce her. Well, I could mind. Oh, yeah, I've got plenty of evidence. Look here, dear boy. I do not think you've had enough to drink. I'd hope to talk this over sensibly. You see, Edward, God often works in a way... Don't preach to me, father-in-law! You're as bad as the rest of them, you know that. Sacked from your Paris because you couldn't leave the women alone. Oh, they didn't unfrog you, though, did they? Oh, no. That would have caused too big a scandal, wouldn't it? So they hid you in the slums of Marylebone, so that if you did get up to your tricks again, it wouldn't be noticed. Well, you shouldn't preach to me. I think I'd better go. Go on. Oh, very well. Perhaps you'll think about what I've said, Edward. I shall pray for you. Why won't you see me? Goodbye, Edward. No, don't see me. I'd, I'll find my own way. Not coming? You say she's not coming? I'm afraid there was a sudden change of plan at the last moment. Where is she? She had to go back to London. London? How on earth do you expect to keep the child a secret in London? I've brought little Jeanne back here with me. I see. OK, 
Please, Arthur, you mustn't be bitter. Try to understand. Lily felt she had to go back to London and show herself, if, if only to stop silly gossip. And now she told me she wanted to come here. Well, I think she did in her heart, but she feels she has to get some sort of job. Edward has no money. I'd have looked after her. And the baby. I wanted to. She knew that. Yes. They're going to live here. Together. I'm very sorry, Arthur. I think if Edward had agreed to give her a divorce, things might have been different. She'd have been free to marry you then. He has refused. Yes, I'm afraid he has. Mm. She never told me, you know. What, dear? Who the father of the child was. I didn't like to ask. And she never told me. No. I didn't know what to do. I wish I could hate her, but I can't. The child is with you, you say? Yes. Well, look after her. Yeah. Stay here as long as you wish. I must go now. I'm very sorry, Arthur. I love for you to see. I was her. I thought you loved me. I was wrong. I'm delighted to be back, sir. And Jean-Marie, your little niece, how is she? She's very well, thank you. My mother's looking after her in Jersey. Mama will look after her until I can find a suitable governess. It's better that way, as I shall have to find some sort of work. Tell me, my dear, are you still considering a theatrical career? It seems to me you might do very well on the stage. Do you really think so? With my help, my dear, yes. You would do very well indeed. So Mrs. Langtris with us again? Yes. Let's say HRH, would be pleased. Oh, I hope so, I'm sure. Wonder what took her away so suddenly. I've really no idea. I expect she wanted to take a rest. Mm -hmm. Nothing in all this talk about a child, I suppose. Oh, I don't think so. After all, she's been separated from her husband for some time now. Of course, stupid of me. I'd forgotten that. Thank you, Mrs. Langtree. Forgive me, sir, if I slip away. I know it's early, but I'm rather tired. Yes, of course, my dear, but are you sure? Uh, well, I know it's inexcusable, but I really think I must. Very well, we'll come and say goodnight to Alex first. <laughs> Looks as if Mrs. Langtry's leaving. Oh, she can't be. No one leaves before their royal highness. Except it would seem Mrs. Langtry. <laughs> Don't make a show. I've had enough of all this. I'm going to find a job. What, now, tonight? <laughs> yes, I'm going to see Ellen Terry to ask for her help. Well, what better time than now? I know she'll be at the theatre. Well, whatever did Bertie say when you told him you wanted to leave? He looked a little surprised. I told him I had a headache. Oh, I didn't tell him where I was going. In any case, he looks far too taken with Lady Brooke these days to worry about me. Pretty little thing, isn't she? Yes, I suppose so. A little bit sharp, though, don't you think? Perhaps. And that sort of looks fashionable these days, isn't it? <laughs> well, I wish them joy. I must go. Goodbye, my dear. Bye. So, you wish to become an actress, Mrs. Langtry? Yes. I see. And how long have you had this notion? For several months now. It was not originally my idea. The Prince of Wales suggested it. The Prince of Wales? Yes. And Oscar Wilde said he thought I might do very well. Oscar Wilde. And even Sarah Bernhardt when she was in London. Madam Bernhardt. You have an impressive list of counsellors, Mrs. Langtry. Thank you, Miss Derry. But I thought I'd like to talk to you before making up my mind. It's a hard life, you know. The theatre is not all pretty costumes and applause. Oh, I know. I am prepared to work. I want to work. Oh, but why do you want to work? Surely in your I'm position... I'm bored with the sort of life that I've been leading. And even if I'd enjoyed every minute of it, I would still have to work. Oh, simply in order to live, to earn some money. I see. And do you feel you have a talent for acting? I don't know. I should like to find out. Well, 
Well, I think a little talent is necessary, my dear. Will you excuse me a moment? Perhaps you should consider taking acting lessons. There are actresses, and I believe actors who give them, and they're not expensive. I had hoped to join a company, uh, only playing small parts, of course. Oh, yes, that might come later, but tuition first, I think. You know, Mrs. Langtry, I really feel you should consider more carefully. Most girls, when they enter the profession, start at a much earlier age. I first trod the boards at the age of eight. But then both my parents were thespians. <laughs> Not that that is always the case by any means. Mr. Irving's father was a travelling salesman. <laughs> but whatever their origins, I think, most actors feel the theatre in their blood, from infancy. You have come rather late to it, haven't you? I've had the most delightful afternoon, Oscar. We went to the races at Sandown, and I actually backed a winner. My dear, I never realised that racing could be so exciting. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, Mrs. Lantry. Good afternoon. Uh, have you come to see me? I have. Your housekeeper told me to wait in here. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. My name is Henrietta Labouchere. Mrs. Henrietta Labouchere. Mrs. Labouchere? Oh, but of course I know you. This is Oscar, Oscar Wilde. Oh, Mr. Wilde and I are already acquainted. Hello, Oscar. Henrietta. Of course, how silly of me, please. Thank you. Well, what can I do for you, Mrs. Labouchere? Oscar has not told you. Oscar, you foolish fellow. I thought it would come better from your lips, my dear Henrietta. What is all this? Some sort of plot? No, nothing of the kind. Oscar tells me you are thinking of going on the stage. Well, I was. Good. Now, I used to be an actress, as I expect you know. And we're getting up a little evening in aid of our local hospital in Twickenham. That is where I live now. We shall perform in the town hall. Two pieces. A thing of Tom Taylor's called Plot and Passion. And then to end with... A little comedy from the French called A Fair Encounter. I want you to be in it. Me? Yes, it's quite a short piece. And there are only two parts. I want us to do it together. Uh, Mrs. Labouchere, I have had no experience. I couldn't possibly. Oh, nonsense. I shall help you, teach you. Now, I think we might rehearse in the garden at home. Oh, you'll stay with us, of course, during the rehearsal period. Well, you don't want to travel up and down to Twickenham every day, do you? I've spoken to Henry, my husband. He's a member of Parliament, you know, and he has agreed to help us. Here are lines and that sort of thing. Now, I suggest we start tomorrow. That will give us a month before the performance. And the part is not difficult. Lady Clara St. And when could you come to me? As soon as you please, my lady. Today, if you like. That would suit me exactly. I simply must have you to dress me tonight. She's a rather silly creature, Lady Clara, isn't she? Oh, Lily. Oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> I simply must have you to dress me tonight. You have not told me your name. Josephine. Well, Josephine. Now that you are here, you might as well stay. I'm sorry. I, I'm... Something about the page fetching the boxes. I, I'm sorry, Henry. I'm oh, sorry. don't worry, my dear. The lines will come. Now, don't forget who you are. Lady Clara is an aristocrat, used to having her every wish attended to. You must say it more boldly. And don't forget, posture, posture, posture. Mm. Now, let's do it from the beginning. <clears throat> and when could you come? Excuse me, my lady. May I ask why you parted with your last maid? Well, I suppose it's only a fair question, since you have been so explicit. My maid has just dismissed herself to get married after being three years with me. She found that she had... had... Uh, well, let's be charitable and say, saved enough money to... To buy herself a husband. And those have gone up in price, too, lately, like everything else. <laughs> Give me my fan. It's on the mantel shelf. Yes, my lady. Here it is, my lady. I wonder where she has put George's letter. <laughs> Pick up my handkerchief. Yes, my lady. Well, why don't you give it to me? What are you about? Oh, here it is, my lady. Where can that letter be? <laughs> Draw the blind. The sun annoys me. The sun? Why, there is no sun. Oh, well, 
the moon, then, or whatever it is. I do hate to be contradicted. <laughs> and so do I. I can't stand Harry as much longer. I shall lose my temper directly. I know I shall. <laughs> yes, I think I shall like you. Cyril has often told me that his greatest friends are the men he fought with at school and that he has never thoroughly liked a man until they had nearly killed each other. <laughs> Cyril and I are very much alike. Ours was but a war of woman's wit. In which I have been defeated. Not so. If our battle were to be described in heroic verse, the poet would have to assert that the adversaries were well matched and that it was. A fair encounter. A triumph, my dear Lily, while it ill becomes a man to say, I told you so. Oh, I'm so glad it's over. Do you think it really went well? Oh, you were very good. You were both divine. And I'm prepared to take odds that the town hall of Twickenham has never seen a more distinguished audience. My husband has written a glowing review for his paper. I shall read it to you. It is difficult to judge anyone from a single performance. But if Mrs Langtry can play other parts as well as she does lovely young widows, she would, were she to adopt the stage as a career, be worth a fortune to any theatre. Oh, I think Lavi's been very kind. There follows a paragraph <laughs> about me. Mrs Labouchere has a rare quality. Where's the peacock? I beg your pardon? The fire screen that Lady Lonsdale salvaged from the wreck. What have you done with it? Oh, I've put it away somewhere. I think it brings me bad luck. Well, I can't pretend that I ever liked it, and I never thought to find you so superstitious. Come along, Frank. We must leave the ladies to receive the tributes of the common herd. Lily, you were superb. Last night, I'm convinced, will be the first of many successes. <laughs> Goodbye, ladies. Oscar? You were jolly good. Jolly good. Goodbye, Oscar. Frank. Oh, Henrietta, isn't it wonderful? I'm so glad it's over. I couldn't bear to go through that again. Nonsense. Of course you could. Now, this is what we must do. Squire Bancroft and his wife are giving a charity matinee performance of She Stoops to Conquer next month at the Haymarket in aid of the General Theatrical Fund or something, I don't remember. And a lot of very distinguished gentlemen have agreed to take part. I think you should play Kate Hardcastle. Henrietta, don't be absurd. I, I shall go and talk to Squire. Oh, you course. can't. You mustn't. I should look ridiculous. In any case, I'm sure they wouldn't want me. You're wrong, Lily. They will want you. I don't think you quite understand the power of your position, my dear. Oh, the Bancrofts will want you for their charity performance, all right. I shall see to that. Mrs Langtry? Mrs Langtry? But what has she done, my dear Henrietta? No idea she'd even enter the profession. Of course she has entered the profession, Squire. I'm surprised you have not heard of our little triumph last week in Twickenham. I believe I did hear something about it. Didn't you do one of Tom Taylor's pieces, Plot and Passion? Oh, I never think that quite works. No. We were going to try it once. Yes, that was the first play. And then, to conclude the evening, Mrs. Langtry and I appeared in a fair encounter, and I think I can uh, say... One appearance in Twickenham, even with as talented a person as yourself, does not fit her to appear here with us at the Haymarket. And Kate, Hardcastle is not a negligible part. My wife has played it many times, and you will agree with me, my dear, will you not? Most certainly, my dear. <laughs> to play Kate Hardcastle, one must be able to command the stage. I often think it's more... Yes, I have played the part myself. Well... Well, I'm sorry you will not consider Mrs. Langtry. You realise, of course, that if she were to appear with your company, it would guarantee the presence of their Royal Highnesses, the Prince and Princess of Wales. The Prince is anxious to encourage her career, and I think he would not want to miss her first appearance in so distinguished a company. You think they'd come, do you? I know they would. The Prince and Princess of Wales? You'd sell every seat, Squire. And the performance will be the talk of the town. Oh. Well, perhaps we should consider it. What do you think, my dear? Well, I don't know. You see, Henrietta, there are actresses in our company. Uh, yes, yes, but I expect we could arrange all that. And we do want to do well for the fun, do we not? Of course, my dear, I should rely on you to help Mrs. Langtry show her how it should be done. We'll put the royals in the OP box, I think. The audience will get a good view of them from there. Oh, 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 
we both enjoyed the play as well. Well done, my dear. Well done Thank indeed. You. I think you could have played it more brilliantly. It was a lovely yeah. evening, dear, and you looked ever so nice. And I thought the gentleman playing Mr. Marlowe was very good too. Yeah. See, I'm talking about it's funny you come in with a chance before you go behind the screen. Don't get slow then. I shall write a play for you. I shall write a dozen plays. This is only the beginning. Oh, isn't that awesome. Lantry? Congratulations. Mrs. Lantry. Oh, please, ladies and gentlemen, they're coming. My husband is bringing them. Oh, what an honour. I was presented. His Royal Highness asked particularly to meet me. And now so full. Not a seat anywhere. Just think what it'll mean for the fund. Mm. Now, if you'd all just wait in there. That's right. Right. This way, please. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wilde. So refreshing. Oh, come along now. They'll be here any minute. We did enjoy the play, Mrs. Bancroft. My husband knows about the theatre, and he was saying... Oh, how well you all took your part. Oh, thank you, so kind. It won't be for long. We'll call you as soon as their Royal Highness is afloat. Thank you. Mr. Wilde. Come in. Mrs. Langtree, Lily, we have so enjoyed our evening. You were awfully good, really most convincing. I have no idea how you remember all those words. My dear Mrs. Langtree, a most excellent performance. My warmest congratulations. Amusing play. Thank you, sir. Ma'am. We were all a little nervous, but I think it went quite well. Absolutely splendid. Well, Bancroft, I think you've discovered a new talent this evening. I look forward to seeing Mrs. Langley in other pieces. Good night, Mrs. Langley. Oh, Lily, isn't it wonderful? Wonderful. It's all right. You can all come out now. Oh, so sorry. Oh, Lily, I'm sure. A toast, my toast, my friends. I insist on a toast. Have you all got glasses? Yes, yes, yes. To Kate Hartcastle and her fair interpreter, who does not need to stoop to conquer one who is now and evermore her most fervent admirer. Kate Hartcastle. Bravo. Him, doesn't she? You told me the affair was over, but she still sees him. I know what goes on. Lily is a friend of his royal highness. Oh, a friend? Yes. Uh, that's not what I'd call it. She's his mistress. Edward. Your daughter is nothing better than a whore. Edward! I, I admit that her clients are the best. Highest in the land, I won't deny that. Be silent, sir! I, I will not have you talking like this in front of my wife. Why shouldn't I? She knows. She knows what goes on between them, don't you, Mrs. Le Breton? This is unforgivable. Her behaviour is unforgivable! I thought she cared. In spite of... In spite of the... She does care for you, Edward. No. She wants to get rid of me. That's why you're here, isn't it? That is not She true. sent you to beg for a divorce. Well, I don't deny that a divorce would seem the most sensible I thing. Won't, I won't do it. I told her so. Please, Edward, you hardly see each other. You lead separate lives. And now that her work in the theatre... Oh, yes, yes. Now, now she's successful, isn't she? A successful actress. The famous Mrs Langtree. But what about Mr Langtree? What am I supposed to do? Creep up into the gallery and watch my wife make an exhibition of herself and then di disappear so as not to embarrass the famous actors. Is that what she wants? Oh, of course not, Edward. Well, she owes me more than that. How long have we been married? Seven years. Nearly eight. Well, that's for something, isn't it? Some consideration. No, I don't know what you're talking and if, about. If she's so successful, she could damn well pay for it. I'll tell her so. Yes, I'll go and now. I'll, I'll, I'll go and tell her. Sending you down here to do a grubby little errand. You don't, Edward. It's it will do there. no good. It's not right. I'll tell her so. I... Forgive me. I, I have to go now. Forgive me. Of 
course I'm grateful, Squire. I'm deeply grateful for all the help that you and Mrs. Bancroft have given me. Without you and Henrietta, I don't suppose I should ever have got started. But I really can't spend the rest of my life with your company. But you have only been with us three months, Mrs. Langtry. Well, yes, I suppose it's not a very long time, is it? Mrs. Langtry feels the time has come for her to form her own company. Indeed. Isn't that rather an ambitious undertaking for a beginner? Well, you get nowhere in this business without ambition, and you ought to know that, Squire. <laughs> but Mrs. Langtry is still very young. Oh, you cannot flatter me into staying, Squire. We're taking out a tour, aren't we, Henrietta? Just some of the bigger cities. Mm, Manchester, Edinburgh. We shall take She Stoops and a new piece of Tom Taylor's called an unequal oh, man. Oh, 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 Lily, will you tell this oh, fellow here? Mr. Wait. Langtry. I don't think you know Mr. Bancroft. My husband, Edward Langtry. How do you do, Mr. Langtry? Oh, how do you do? Lily, I want to Just talk to minute, you. Just a minute, Edward. I've got... I, I... I wonder if you'd excuse us, Mr. Bancroft, Mrs. Labouchere. My dear, we must talk further of your plan, Lily. Really. Of course. Come up in ten minutes, Lily. Thank you, Henry. What are you doing here? Why did you send your parents to see me? My parents? They came to see me. Did they? Well, you I ruined expected. me, you know. I'm ruined. And it's all your fault. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. They stopped my allowance. My family. They stopped sending me money. Because I'm married to you. Don't be ridiculous, Edward. We've been married seven years. And it... I'm still seeing him, aren't you? Seeing him? The Prince of Wales! I don't deny it. I know what's going on. I can make trouble, you know. Tell a story about you and His Royal Highness. I'm not saying I would mind, but I could if I wanted to. What do you want, Edward? What am I expected to do? Man can't live on air. I mean, well, there's a the rent for my lodgings, and fellow's got to eat. Here. It's all I have at the moment. They tell me it's a very profitable business, this play acting. Well, they tell you wrong. Now, look, you'll have to go. The curtain goes up in a few minutes. Oh, uh... Listen to me, Edward. I'll arrange for you to receive more money, but I cannot talk about it now. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll sit here. No, you must go now. Please, over. I... Please, Edward. It's, it's only a, a temporary arrangement, you yes. know, just to tide me yes, over. Yes, of course. Uh, see, I, I, I've got plans. Oh, yes, I've got a lot of very good ideas. In, in the shipping line, of course, you see. I... Good night, Edward. Oh, Lily. Why did you do it? Why? I can't talk about anything now, Edward. I'm going on stage. You were fond of me once, weren't you? Yes. Thank you. It's all right, Edward. Good night. Goodbye. <laughs> ah, Francis. From Louis. He's coming home. Oh, indeed, sir. Won't his return create something of a problem? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean with Mrs. Langtry? And the child, sir. Ah, uh, yes, yes. We agreed to tell him when he came home, didn't we? That was your intention. Hmm. Well, I don't know what to do, I'm sure. I mean, if Louis is told, he'll insist on seeing Mrs. Langtry, won't he? I should think so, sir. Hmm. Well, let's see, what does he say? He's due back in October. Well, Mrs. Langtry is touring at the moment. How long was the tour, sir? I have no idea. Uh, she's in Manchester for the next week or two. Uh, apparently the tour is a vast success, so perhaps she may prolong it indefinitely. We must hope so, eh, Francis? Is he, is he?
Good night. Good night, gentlemen. simple document, Mr. Langtry. I don't think you have any trouble understanding it. I don't know why she had to bother you, Lewis. There's no need for all this paper, in my view. I think you'll find it more satisfactory in the long run. It's, it's, it's just a simple arrangement between a fellow and his wife, that's all. I shall read it to you, and then I shall ask you to sign two copies. Do you understand? Of course I understand. Get on with it. I, the undersigned, do hereby promise to keep from the company of my wife, Mrs. Lily Langtry, at all times and in all places, unless it be at her invitation, and then only for as long a time as pleases her. In return for such an undertaking, the sum of thirty-five pounds is to be paid to me monthly by the aforementioned Mrs. Langtry. If at any time I break this promise and attempt to see my wife, this agreement shall become null and void. Is that clear? Well, I suppose so. If you would sign just there, please. It's, it's, it's quite unnecessary, this, you know, Lewis. Unnecessary. Thank you. And this one, please. It, it, this, is, this is only a temporary arrangement, you understand. Till I... I get started. Then I, I won't need her help or anyone else's. I've got plans, you see. Oh, yes. Yes, I've, I've, I've got one or two irons in the fire. And then I won't need her money. I, I was once a wealthy man, you know. We have a yacht. Yes, indeed. Goodbye, Mr. Langley. Success, my dear Lily, is a bloom that quickly fades. Now that you are a professional actress, you must treat the drama with respect. I do. I always have done. And yet I hear that in Edinburgh, during a performance of an unequal match, you came onto the stage whenever the university students shouted for you, regardless of whether or not the plot called for your presence. You've been talking to Henrietta. Indeed, I have not. I regard her influence over you as an unmitigated disaster. Well, it wasn't a very good play anyway, so it didn't really matter. If the play was not good enough for you, you should not have appeared in oh, it. Oh, Oscar, let's not quarrel. I'm going to America next month. Henrietta will be here any minute with Mr. Henry Abbey to discuss the details. He's taking the place to New York. My dear, I shall be there to welcome you. Oscar! It's true. I'm to give a lecture in New York, followed by a tour. They want me to dress in black velvet with knee breeches and talk about aesthetics. <laughs> Excuse me, Signora. Yes. There is a photographer here. He he says he's come to take pictures of the soap. Soap. <laughs> See, that's what he says. Oh, I know what it is. Ask him to come in, will you, please, Dominic? <laughs> Oscar, you'll have to go. They've come to take my picture for an advertisement. An advertisement? You can't be serious. <laughs> I certainly am. It's for pear soap. They are paying me one hundred and thirty-two pounds for the picture and my signature, saying that I use the stuff. One hundred and thirty-two pounds. <laughs> yes. It's my weight. I didn't know what to ask for, and Patsy said something about asking for my weight in gold. <laughs> well, I thought that was a little excessive, so... Ah, good afternoon, gentlemen. I shall stay and watch. They're sure to want somebody to witness the signature. Oh, very well, then. Now, gentlemen, where would you like me? Perhaps if you put your camera there by the window, that'll give you the best light, won't it? Yes, apparently this American fellow, Abby, concluded the deal then and there. Mrs. Langtry leaves for America in a month's time. As soon as her season at the Imperial is over. Mm, that's right. Solves something of a problem for us, eh, Francis? Yes, it does. I understand Mrs. Langtree's ship departs just two days before in Constance to at Portsmouth. <laughs> Couldn't have arranged it better if I tried. 
Do I smell a plotter? Oh, it's nothing, Charlie, nothing. No. Did I understand you to say that you'd seen Mrs. Langley's Rosalind? Indeed. Went twice, in fact. Thought she looked particularly fine in her masculine attire. Yes. Yes, she's got good legs, hasn't she, Charlie? Especially in tights, eh? I believe she has, sir. <laughs> well, we'd better organise a farewell party for her, Francis. Just a few close friends, you understand? Not too many damned actors. They're a boring lot. I gave a dinner for that fellow Bancroft the other evening. Very heavy going. Certainly, sir. <laughs> Shall I consult the Princess of Wales as to the guest list? Yes, do that, Francis. Hmm. Francis, I think Lady Brooke might enjoy the evening. See that she's invited, will you? Well, Charlie, here's to the most beautiful pair of legs in London. Eh? <laughs> oh. And good luck to them in America. Yes, they came and took my photograph from several angles, mm -hmm. though I suppose they'll only use one. Mm -hmm. Then I had to sign a statement saying that for years I'd used pear soap and no other. It only took half an hour. <laughs> I hope they paid you handsomely, Mrs. Langtry. Oh, they did, they did. <laughs> Though I believe some people have been quite shocked. I can't see any harm in it. We did so much enjoy As You Like It, Mrs. Langtree. I think even more than the other plays. And you were excellent. As good as Madame Bernhardt. Thank you, Mark. I think I shall never be as good as that. You secured a good contract with Mr. Abbey, I understand. Oh, yes. I advise Mrs. Langtree to hold out for what Madame Bernhardt received. She did, and got it. Well? I'm not sure that I ought to reveal the exact figure, Mr. Lewis. Oh, come, Mrs. Lubbershire, I've only to ask your employer. My partner, if you please. Oh, I beg your pardon, your partner. A thousand dollars a performance, half the box office receipts in excess of four thousand dollars, and two hundred dollars a week hotel expenses. <laughs> and the expenses of the other members of the company? To be paid by Mr. Abbey. Good. That's quite satisfactory. I thought so. Mind. <laughs> My dear Lily, why should I mind if the fact that you are a friend of mine will help sell tickets in America, then by all means let them know. I think you underestimate yourself, my dear. It's your talent as an actress that they're excited about. One day I hope that may be true. But now all I can say is, thank you, my dear, dear. Daisy, I've hardly had a chance to talk to you all evening. Only a blind man would willingly ignore the most beautiful woman in the room. I suppose it was kind of people. Yes. I know you'd expect his bouquet to be the largest, but really, Lily, don't you think that's a little too much? <laughs> yes, it is rather large, isn't it? Well, I made sure of one thing before I left. Mr. Labouchere will miss me now that I've gone. What do you mean, Henrietta? I dismissed the cook and cut all the buttons off his shirts. You didn't. <laughs> Indeed I did. <laughs> Well, he was always saying he'd get along perfectly well without me, so I thought I'd teach him a lesson. You are incorrigible, <laughs> Henrietta. <laughs> what on earth would a poor man do? He couldn't possibly. What is it? Nothing. Nothing. It's not important. A friend of mine. He's been serving in the Mediterranean for a few months now. Is he dead? No. No, his ship docks in Portsmouth in two days' time. It's in the paper. 
But why? He's coming home. After all these months, he's coming home and I shan't see him. Let him come and go. Yeah, you must, my dear. <laughs> we shall be arriving in Liverpool soon, and there will be photographers when we go on board Arizona. Was he very important to you, this man? Were you fond of him? Oh, yes, he was important to me. I loved him.